This week's episode, should you buy a robot for your plant, for your company? I don't don't know. know. I don't know either. That's what we're going to talk about this week. Positives and why you may actually want to buy one. All right. Here we go. Let's go. All right, here we go. Here we go. Who doesn't love robots? My son loves them. We got one of those vacuum things that runs around the house, and he spends most of his day trying to stop it, turn it off, break it down, clean it, and never put it back together. Yeah, that's part of the reason why we thought about this today, (laughs) because they're kind of taking over everything, and we had an amazing listener request that was like, hey. Can you talk about it a little bit? Can you talk about safety and the path of AI and robots and, and how you think all of that ties together? So. We're doing it. We're doing it. So the first one is, should you even buy one? That's the question everybody asks. Everywhere we go, everybody's looking to buy one. This is a podcast. You can't get to everywhere and you can't travel every week. So what do you do? Robot systems, systems, computers, systems, robots, whatever that is. Well, I know that that's one of the biggest driving factors that people are having right now because they're short on labor. Absolutely. and, And the demand hasn't gone down. So how do we fill... The gaps of Absolutely. that. What do we do? How do we meet the customer demand? How do we make sure that we're staying within that price point? Because that's big too. So the beginning of this episode is talking about some opportunities. The end of the episode is talking about some conclusions, ideas, concepts, how to fix some of it. So yeah. Here we go. All right. Yeah. So labor issues is one of them. One of the weirdest things that came out of it was experienced people that were great at doing the task left during the pandemic. Yeah. We did not. We did not on board the next group. We yeah. did not train the next group. We just left. Well, we didn't think they were leaving. Right. That was part so, of it. So the secession planning was kind of limited. Right. It so didn't then, even take place in some... So then you've got a job that the person was kind of in a weird way, the control that managed everything, the stuff that was on paper and really not. And then what happened is when they left, now that knowledge is gone and, and the time, you can't get all those years back of knowledge... Well, so you're looking at how do you of, get the time back? Yeah, there was a lot of data that we had that was kind of implied. Correct. Just that you gathered over your experience working in the field, working at that plant in particular, Correct. maybe working with that specific machine. Maybe, you know, sometimes it's a little touchy, so you've got to do these five things or something. We lost all of that, and right. it wasn't captured in our procedures. So now, so now the person, Joe's a new hire. Joe's a new hire, didn't get the same onboarding, didn't get the same training, didn't get those little things you talk about, but are there that they do. So the system doesn't run right. So the, yep. the, the, the product per minute or the response or the downtime is all off now than yeah. what it was. We're slowing down line speeds in some yep. circumstances. Because that person used to know if you do this real quick, it puts it back in operation. And yep. now we don't have that. So what's happening is that the time has increased dramatically if something goes wrong yeah, and now you're looking downtime. at, okay, should, if we bought a robot to do that problem, then all we're managing is the robot and that doesn't retire and no. doesn't leave on us. So that's no, where some of the thoughts are coming and, from. And honestly, from a shift standpoint, we're having a little bit of difficulty hiring for the off shifts. Absolutely. A, a robot runs 24 hours yeah. a day if we wanted to. For those you don't know us that much, we're Joe and Jim. We work in the meat industry. And one of the things that everybody talks about is the price of meat is whatever. I'm like, you know that labor's not full and the lines aren't full and full staff yet, yeah. but they were six years ago. Yeah. So if there's nobody to process the product, then there's no product. Yeah. So, so part of that is that well, how do how do we do that for the consumer? How do we do that for the industry of the world? You may have to look at getting a robot to bring those timelines back down, so that so the yep. specialty cuts or the specialty projects may be a human, but the but the putting a box somewhere doing something that would have normally been a human going left to right or right to left, maybe that's a robot now because that gets yeah. your time back for labor. Well, and when you have limited staffing, you you know you're going to fill the probably least impact from an ergonomic standpoint, job first. Correct. So when you think of boxing and palletizing, I mean, those were always big ergo jobs. Right. And so we have the opportunity to say, hey, is the, could we have a robot step in and they do make this them. because we're short Yeah, handed. And they make them and they do it. And for those of you people don't know much about us, we used to go overseas a lot. And one of the things we did, we did work for companies that helped build robots. Yeah. And we got to talk to them a lot, like, a whole bunch of weeks during the year about what they're doing and why they're doing and what they're doing, how the world's looking. And a lot of it is, is that here in the States, 
you know, our, our systems are very reliant on the people's and the concept, yeah. the way they do it, yeah. where, where in other countries or, or some of the crews we worked with very much was mechanical and how the robot or how the computer system worked and interfaced yeah. with the piece of equipment. They, their knowledge was on that. If, yeah. if you told them, if you told them, Hey, how do you, how do you run the production line or cut a piece of meat? They'd be like, I'm not sure, but they can sure tell you how to wire that device and yeah. make whatever it is, do what you want it to do. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's kind of no. By the way, for those who don't know, I am wearing the American flag stuff. We do have the Navy Corman Cup up because it is Veterans Week coming up this week. Yeah, and it, Happy if, Veterans if, Day to all my veterans out that's there. That's awesome. Yes, and by the way, you know it's the right cup because you don't drink. There's only certain coffee cups that kind of drink. It was fun. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so the point of it is, thank you for everybody out there who who served any time. Doesn't matter when you did, but I appreciate yep. it. So yeah, uh, it's kind of cool. All right. So now, so that's the first one. So now the next thing we're looking at is a. Uh, Monday morning. Monday morning, we're getting ready to set up the equipment. Yep. I've got six people scheduled to set up the equipment to show up. So now yep. Yep. I am having 100 people stand around with nothing really to do because until the equipment's set up, then no one else can do their job because equipment's not set up. So now the two people are, are stressed or freaking. So from a safety side, that's a lot of risk and stress. Those people have first thing in the morning, first waking up, first yep. going in, and they're like, oh, they're trying, or even third shift is trying to finish. But the first shift was supposed to come in and help, but right. they never showed up. So now third staying tired, trying to fix the equipment, get it going. Well, and that's part of it. And and the other part that kind of also goes with that is that some of these jobs, because of the weight of the equipment or and where you're having to move it and Absolutely. how you get it in place, it wasn't a one person job. It was Correct. a two or three person job. Well, if you don't have the labor to do some of that, now, now you're having a problem. Yeah, what are you gonna do? From, you're you're gonna grab the person standpoint. next to you who's never done it in life and say when you want help. So from a we're safety company, so for the risk standpoint, that risk variable has went it's up dramatically. Going crazy right now yeah, for for the the one offs like that. But yep. it's real. It's not one off anymore. Yep. Six years ago, we would have said oh, that's hardly ever going to happen. Now we're like, okay, that happens. Yeah, I feel like we're running during deer season all the time. Yeah, which is coming yeah. up right now. Too. If anybody knows our industry, that yeah, means you, kn you knew people weren't showing up. When it was deer season, yes. <laughs> it was just a given. And I feel like we're running like that all the time. Where it's like, are they going to come today? I don't know. <laughs> so that's kind of where we're at. So now we're at, you know, first, uh, you know, the experienced people are gone a little yep, bit. We've lost and experience. Now, and now we've got some people that don't show up for whatever reason, for whatever reason. Yep. And, and as you have that now, now you have the 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 risk of, I don't know the equipment. Now, maybe I got to set the quote to my left. I'm not really good at that. I always do these five. Yep. Now I've got to do these three to my left, but I'm not really good at it. So your risk as the safety side goes up. The yep. procedures were always wrote, calculating that the experienced person was kind of putting stuff together. Yeah. Now you've got to rewrite procedures to capture how you would do it if you didn't know. Yeah. And, and so when you review your procedure, view your concert, view your annual trainer, annual, whatever it is, lockout, whatever it is, you got to, you got to back up now and say, okay, we need to look at how it would work if I had to do it and I have no clue how to do it. Yep. Because that's the way I look at it. We're, we're changing the amount of information we're having to include in those procedures. Correct. Which really makes it critical. Who is writing those? Correct. So now we go back to, by the way, I have a legal disclaimer. Yep. Um, this Don't, stuff is our opinion. <laughs> yeah. opinion. Do yeah. a, a thorough risk evaluation because every situation is different. While a lot of plants have similar Absolutely. things going on, every circumstance is a little different. So don't just you know, implement across the board, do it, do an evaluation first. So we go back to now, now the procedures, now the procedures were constant. They were absolute. They're flawless. Uh, maintenance person one reviewed them. They're perfect. Make sure for instance, yes, they're right. Now that procedure may not be right. Yeah. Now that procedure could have a one-off. Now that procedure I've got to have every little, now I may have to have a setup step and a breakdown step and a cleaning step yep. and, and a, and a, a, these troubleshooting weird, a, stuff, these st PM stuff. Right, a stuff I, I, I would have just, you know, Joe would have just done it because that's the way you do it. And I reviewed yep. the procedure and it says fine, but now I've got to go back and add all that stuff now. And that's it. Cause who? Cause well, the and person the that knew point. it isn't there no more. <laughs> yeah. So who is the person that's editing the procedures for some of this equipment too? Right. And, and the, the positive thing on the robot side is that you've got the techs and the installers that can help you do some yes, of that. Yes, you have a and, reference. And, and you have things that are programmed. Yes, you have a cer reference. Certain specific programs you can run to, That's to do some of these and, things. And some programs you can't just, run on yeah, purpose. Yeah. So when you just have a piece of equipment that's not robot driven, you don't have some of that. Correct. And and when you take computer screens or you, or you take any kind of machine where you've got this computer does this and this one interface with this, this one does this process. 
a lot of those are set up that if you're right, if you had a fail, you call a number yep. and they can literally they can talk you through it because it. it's a computer program. Yep. Well, now that's different where if you didn't have a machine that had that technology nowadays, if you had an older machine, you're really going back to, for those of you who don't know, I can't change oil in a vehicle. I'm glad there's people that do because I pull in, it takes them 15 minutes and I'm on, but I couldn't do that. Yeah. So it's the same concept. There's there's skill sets that people have or don't have over time. We lost those skill sets. We lost that idea. And now the labor happens where they're not all there. Now it's almost easier to call the 1-800 number and say, hey, how do I, I reprogram? And some of those, some people could do it remotely. They can repo some can, of the systems remotely. Yes, yeah, some so. of them can be done remotely. And then some of them will come and travel to you. So if you are having staffing shortages and you, and you don't have people that can do that, they bring in crews. Correct. Which to we do used it. to we used to train a bunch of those. We come from different parts of the world and we come to the states and we'd meet them at different places and we'd work on what do you do when you come to the states and how the problems yep. and things we're facing. And 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 they would. They would literally come in. Some would say for months and just yep. go plant to plant. So so yes, so it's so the robot is more than just a robot. The robot yep. is it's it's a downtime issue, it's a maybe a labor issue, it's a knowledge issue. It's, it's a show up on Monday morning issue. And then again, now you've got some support and some ideas to maybe help you. Right. And, and, and you're not getting that with some of the older. So if you look at your systems, you know, like I said, we have podcasts now. That's our robots. Yeah. That's, that's our way that we're getting data out there to people and doing our process because the, the, yep. the world's not moving like it was. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, and because we don't have any sponsors, AllenSafetyCoaching.com is our sponsor. <laughs> That's so it. If you, That's want, so if you want some more in depth where we really drill down into some of these topics, AllenSafetyCoaching.com is where you'll find that. Absolutely. So, and but even that was a necessity out of what happened last year. Yeah, limited labor. We couldn't yeah. be everywhere. So we couldn't we be had everywhere. More questions and more need than we had the ability to go and physically show up and help. So we created a system and, to and, do that. And we've done the same thing. We've started doing. There's a. If you ever turn the camera that way. There's a big screen over there, and we've started doing virtual inter- coaching. Virtual co- we had to because yep. the 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 people would say, "Well, I was at I was talking to a plant three days ago, and they said, you know, the person who always validates all these doesn't work here no more." Well, I may be validating them with them live from the location yeah. because I can at least do that on a screen and work with them. Where I, I can't get there, but at least I yeah. can work with them. That's yeah. still a robot. Yeah. It's still the concept of, of bringing in that concept of using, bringing that robot. Using some of the AI, using some of the technology that's at our disposal to FaceTime when we're on a plant floor doing something. Yeah. Or we've done that during leaks. Yeah, we have we, we, we have chemical leaks. We FaceTime because that's that's the technology. I of can't it, physically so. get there before before it's over. All right. So the last one is here and, and we'll we'll be done here. Is the you just you got to remember the positive thing about a robot too is look what that thing could do and how great and big it is. So you got to, yep. but what you got to do is you got to go back and look at back to ergonomics or ergonomics, maybe some look, look at you where you can get a, a, not just a payback on labor, but where you can get a payback on injury reduction, yeah. where you can get a payback on reducing that, that setup risk or reducing those setup, whatever the hazard is. So do like a matrix and yep. figure out here's my jobs that here's where I think I need one. And then yeah. that's how you I decide. I can't fill these jobs. You know, some of the jobs are you know, not everyone's favorite Absolutely. to do. So you, either because uh, it's a dirtier job or it's an ergo yep. job or whatever that looks like. And then you can kind of look, can I even feel these first? Correct. Second, are they an ergo risk? And then it kind of evaluate what's my return on investment? Absolutely. For those you don't know about my history, my very first food plant was almost 100% robot driven. It was wild to watch how the robot would dump the product and then mix a product and then package a product and palletize a product. And I was just amazed because it was in the town I grew up in. So that's kind of cool yeah. that I'm like, here I am in the town I grew up in. I didn't in. even know this was Yeah, here. I didn't know this world existed, yeah. but it was wild to see how it could interface, how it can move. But but that was my first exposure. So I've, I've looked at that world differently ever since then because that yeah. was so wild to me, that, that what we could or couldn't do. Yeah. And that was, you know, 30 years ago almost. Yeah. So, so I think that that would be my biggest thing is that for those jobs that you're having trouble filling are historically high risk from an ergo or a safety standpoint, absolutely. you know, what's it going to take to get the return on the investment yep. and what does that initial investment look like? And then what does the support to maintain it look like? And then you can kind of calculate, does it make sense for you? Absolutely. So that's our, that's our addition today. Yep. Jen, Joe, robots. Don't forget all you veterans out there. <laughs> All right, right, everybody. We're good to go today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.
Thank Take you. care. Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you're looking for more in-depth discussions or step-by-step solutions on all of the different safety and regulatory topics, please visit us at www.allensafetycoaching.com for web-based virtual coaching and training or at www.allen-safety.com to book our team for on-site services, training sessions, to order merchandise, to learn more about our team and what services we provide in the field, or just simply to request a topic for us to cover on our next podcast. If you found today's podcast helpful and would like to support our podcast further, please help us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this podcast with anyone that could benefit from the information we cover here as that helps us to continue to put out this free content. Thank you so much for your support.